So, for the past year, I've been absolutely obsessed with doll repainting and doll customization. I think it just started when like I watched Sophia Nygaard and Shane Dawson's video when they were repainting dolls. And then I just went down a rabbit hole, like for real, like I can watch that all day. Like I feel like I've watched every single one on YouTube. I'm obsessed, especially like Dollightful and Hextian. Those are my favorites. And um, yeah, I really wanted to try it out. So yeah. Anyway, when I was in Houston, I was visiting my little cousin. She's seven. Her name's Eliana. She's so sweet. She wants to be an artist when she grows up, which is incredible. While I was there, I asked her if she could draw out her dream doll. And then I told her that I would repaint it or I would manifest it into a real life doll that she could play with. So this is the design that she gave me. Um, it's so cute. I was so excited when I like saw it because it's not something that I would have thought of. Um, and then I just kind of sketched out my interpretation of it, um, kind of had some ideas and uh, yeah. So I start off with the doll that I got um, secondhand, and basically what you're going to want to do is cut off all the hair, the original hair that it came with, until it looks like Britney Spears in 2007. And now to remove the head, you're going to want to dunk your doll into some boiling water and then take off the plugs from inside. Um, now I'm taking some 100% acetone and removing the factory paint um, to get it ready for a new face that I'm going to be trying on. After doing this, you're going to want to wash your doll with a little bit of soapy water just to get the remaining acetone off and then spray your doll with this thing called Mr. Super Clear, also known as MSC in the doll repainting community. Um, it basically kind of seals your doll and makes the surface a little bit more paper-like so that it's easier to um, draw on. So what I'm doing now is I am kind of darkening the skin color of the doll because my cousin actually has the most beautiful brown skin and I wanted her doll to kind of look like her and uh, yeah and also I didn't really like the original color anyway it just didn't really look that real I don't know it just looked too plasticky and then Anyway, so yeah, you do that a bunch of times. I do layer by layer spraying some Mr. Super Clear all over the doll in between. I can't really tell you how many layers it took me to get this final result, but it took me a couple, to be honest. The pastel job on the plastic didn't really, kind of chipped off a little bit, but I'm gonna fix that later because I'm gonna be painting on socks, but yeah, anyway. Here's just a side-by-side -side of a, another darker skin doll that I have just to compare two different skin tones. Okay, so now for the face up. Um, I have this reference picture from Candy's doll. I think that's her channel, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I really like how like her face ups look, so I kind of wanted to copy her as best as I can. So what I did is after a couple layers more of Mr. Super Clear, I kind of went in with a watercolor pencil and kind of tried my best to build up a foundation with that um i think i didn't really do that well with the sealant and that's why the the pencils weren't really showing up but anyway i then resorted to some acrylic paints because honestly i wasn't getting any more pigment um that's completely my fault and the sealant's fault because i don't know it's very temperamental and i don't know why but anyway It's such a small scale, like you can literally see like how small the paintbrush is compared to my fingernail. Like that's insane. I don't know how people do it. Like y'all have like magnifying glasses or what? Because that's insane. And I'm also painting the scalp yellow in preparation for her new hair, just so if any, if 
if I have any bald spots, you can't really tell, so yeah. And I wasn't really feeling the dark eyebrows um, in comparison to the hair, so I just made her some bushy yellow eyebrows. And I'm not really sure how I feel about this now looking back, but I don't know, it's cute. It ends up being kind of cute, so. And now I'm just taking some shimmer powder. This is actually just like literally my highlighter like that I use for my face. Kind of using that onto the doll. And it actually like works really, really well. Like I'm actually really surprised. And after one last spray of Mr. Super Clear, I move on to the hair. So the hair I use um, yarn wefts and you can find a tutorial on how to make yarn wefts on um, Muzeki Toe's channel. They're actually, it's really, really easy to do and like the turnout looks insane and I love it. Um, so basically what I did is I kind of, I just made a guideline for where I wanted the part to be and I glued the hair wefts onto the doll and when it came to the part I glued them in the opposite direction and then flipped them over so that you couldn't see like the, you can see her tracks <laughs> and uh, yeah. Just kind of did it all over her head. Here I'm just taking out some baby hairs um, with a toothpick and then I'm going to be putting her hair into pigtails later. So as for her colorful pigtails, I actually had to buy um, these hair extensions from Amazon. Um, I thought about doing yarn for this too, but yarn wefts can only be so long. And also I didn't want to buy like a bunch of different colors of yarn when I could just get this. And it worked out really well. What I basically did was I cut off the tracks off the extensions and then so I actually cut them in half because they were pretty long and then I used the cut part and I turned it into a weft. Just not, you know, not to waste it or anything. And I turned it into a weft by gluing the ends together with Elmer's glue. I roll all the wefts onto each other basically to form a large and long ponytail and when you manipulate the hair it kind of shows off more of the colors um, and yeah I really liked how this turned out and to secure it onto the head I just put a needle through it like a sewing pin um, and then I just stick that into the head. And then just for safekeeping while I finish off the rest of the doll, I kind of tie the hair together to try to get it to be more flat because it kind of does reach out. And then for the dress, I don't know how to sew, like, and I am so amazed that I was able to do this. It took me a long time, but I am so proud of myself, like it looks so good. I did it on white fabric because that's what I had, so I'm just going to paint the fabric, which I kind of wish I didn't have to do just because the paint makes the fabric really stiff but anyway it saved me a lot of money let me tell you now I have these jewels that you get for nail art and they're per the perfect size for this and I just kind of glue them on to the dress I use super glue just because that's gonna kind of solidify it and really make it secure because I really don't want these popping off and as for the heart on the dress I actually used super glue to make that and then I painted it red and I also did two more really tiny ones and then for the blue accents I again used super glue and then I just painted that um, and it looked ended up looking really really good like I'm surprised at how resourceful I was because I was really trying to save my pennies on this if you know what I mean and for this ribbon, I actually, again, used a ribbon, but it wasn't pink, so I had to paint it pink. 
and then I just hot glue another pin against it and then use that to shove it into the head and that stays in place really well. And now, because all that is done, I'm gonna just put the head back onto the body. As for the shoes, I actually got these, I think apple white, I did some research, these apple white um, shoes from another doll that I had. And I didn't really like the detail on the heels, so, cause it was kind of like spirally and I just wanted it to be like a regular um, heel. So I kind of just filled it in the gaps with some air dry clay. And then after sanding it and waiting like like 24 hours or whatever, I was able to paint the shoes pink just like in her concept art. I also painted some underwear and then also some white socks and that kind of helped my problem with the whole chipping at the calf. And after assembling the rest of the doll, I actually finished. And this is my first completed doll repaint. I did start working on some other ones as well, but this is like the one that I, the first one that I ever finished and I love how it turned out. I'm actually really proud of myself. Like I didn't really think I could really do it, but I don't know. I just really like it. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but the shoes have red bottoms because I know Hexstein likes doing that and I really, really like, you know, them bloody shoes if you know what I'm saying. So here is my finished doll. Um, I hope you like it. I actually did mail it off to Ileana and she did receive it and she loves it. And that made this entire process so worth it. Honestly, I started this doll like in August and I didn't finish it until maybe mid-October. Um, I did have like a lot of stuff going on in between so I didn't really get to work on it every day, but yeah, it kind of, it was really therapeutic and I really look forward to doing this more and uh, let me know if like you enjoyed this. I do have some more dolls that I'm going to do and it's a surprise, but um, just subscribe and then um, you'll be updated. And thank you so much for watching.